Nation. Hello, I'm Luke Darcy. Welcome to Access All Areas. Round four is done and dusted with, and with me, to chat about all the big footy issues as he does every Monday is Damien Barrett. Hello, Damo. Hey, Dust. Uh, Melbourne got out of jail yesterday, didn't they, with a, a big last quarter, 12 goals. But uh, being three goals down at three-quarter time is, is not the position they should have been in. I, I don't think this changes anything, Dust, on where this club's at. Look pretty grim for them, 19 points down at three-quarter time. But uh, congratulations to the group for responding with a 12-goal last quarter. It's their biggest ever last quarter uh, performance and their highest total score since 1991. So there's something to take out of it. I'm with you. All your problems don't go away on the back of one win, but winning helps. And I, I referenced Port Adelaide, who at the start of the year you wouldn't have thought would be undefeated after four rounds. You get a couple of wins, Damo. Momentum builds in the car, club. You get a bit of self-belief. And suddenly players who look ordinary one week become good players, players who are developing, develop quicker. So it's a good positive sign but a long, long road back for Melbourne still. There was a big decision to make for that footy club had that uh, three-quarter time scoreline continued to the final quarter. But again, there's a pause button pushed on the, the disaster that's unfolding at Melbourne, but at least for one week anyway. Bit of emotion in football, Dame. I personally am all for it. I think it's a, it's a good thing. Brendan Goddard, uh, after the game, he played against his old side, Essendon, also undefeated. Let's have a listen to Brendan Goddard, an emotional uh, uh, address after the game. It's obviously pretty, I'm pretty emotional right now, mate. So... Mate, it's tough coming up against your old side, mate. You've been having 10 years. Uh, mate, it's tough coming up against your old side. I know that, mate. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's a weird feeling, mate. A unique situation. and I'm emotional. I don't know why. It's obviously, I love the footy club, and they meant so much to me and the boys. Yeah. I don't want to see them lose, and it's pretty tough. Dust, I want you to be honest here. That is not in your in keeping with what you think about. You, you do not like players showing emotion to that degree, and I know you don't. What do you mean? You're actually telling me how I think all of a sudden, yeah. are you, Damo? You, you think that I think that is a fantastic display from a man who uh, footballers get uh, termed as mercenaries these days, uh, Damo. We saw a young man who cares about his old teammates, who cares about. Stop looking so at me Sam, like that, Sam mate. Sam Newman reckons it's a character flaw for a man, a footballer, to reveal publicly tears. Then there's Sam thoughts, and I'm not going down that path at all, Damo. I loved it. Well done to, uh, to BJ Goddard. Uh, a nice bit of emotion. Uh, Mick Moldau's got his first win as Carlton coach. It was a big win against West Coast. It came in Perth. Darcy, you've identified these points as to how he did it. I thought he coached really, really well uh, against West Coast at home, which is tough to do. Walker and Gibbs are now playing at, at half back. That worked perfectly for him on uh, Saturday night. Armfield as a defensive forward on Hearn uh, was a really game-changing move. He's tagging more than he's ever done before. Kerno took care of Gaff. Carazzo started on Prittis, took him out of the game. Uh, Selwood got out of control and he switched him over, which was the right move. Now, Judd had a really quiet first half playing as a forward, but he looked dangerous and it yeah. freed up uh, the uh, the space inside forward 50. And Yaron is now a, uh, a forward who can roam and have that space on his own. He took 10 bounces and three goals in the second quarter. So it was a brilliant coaching display from the old master. As we have a look at some of the shepherds that you've, you've highlighted there, particularly with the support there for uh, Yaron, tell me, is that game plan something Mick Moldhouse can transport to other teams and other venues. Well, I love this shepherding, by the way, Jeffy Garlett. We'll see a couple there and one from Dennis Arfield. Look at Arfield run past Selwood from about 15 metres behind us. If that's the, not the best shepherd I've ever seen, I, I'd like to see another one that goes close to it. It's different from Mick Moldhouse. I think in the last 12 years with Collingwood, he's had a much, uh, I suppose, more talented group of players I feel to deal with. He's looked at what he's got. He's tagging more because Dennis Arfield, let's be honest, his best role is a, is a tagger. Carazzo likewise, and Kernow coming into the side. So he's adapted and changed. In the past, he didn't have to do that. So I think uh, some credit to him for doing that. I want to take a look at some uh, footage here of Darren Glass, the West Coast Eagles captain, who clearly was hampered by a right shoulder problem. Outmarked there, and, and in pain regularly throughout the second half of, of this game. Um, should he have been subbed out to us? Look, it's interesting. Uh, with 20-20 hindsight, you'd probably say yes. It's a tough call when you've got an All-Australian full-back and your captain. And that's Rob McLean out, Mark, you Yeah, look, he was in a, absolutely ineffective uh, after he'd injured his shoulder. and uh, was brave enough to stay out there. But uh, you get caught as a club, don't you, where, and a player where you want to be brave, you want to do the right thing for your team, 
and you and you decide to stay out there. But the bottom line is, if you're not able to perform your role, and and look, he couldn't, he really couldn't uh, play the way he wanted to play. So, you know, perhaps if you look back at the game, maybe he should have been subbed out. Take a look at this uh, Travis Cloak uh, footage. A uh, big game from Travis on the weekend against uh, Richmond. Seven goals. He's one of them. Absolutely copying it from the Tiger supporters on the boundary. Darcy he then goes on and kicks the goal. Spoke to him yesterday at the Sunday uh, Footy Show. He he said he didn't actually hear those guys talking to him like that. And we actually spoke to one of uh, the uh, three blokes leaning over the fence on radio today who was reasonably good-natured, Dan, and that was a good thing. Uh, and he said, look, I didn't leave the ground at that stage. I went to the toilet and I oh, came yeah. back. Uh, <laughs> With his mate. I think the Collingwood president might have called him a peanut today on uh, on morning radio, and uh, he had a bit of fun. So what about Cloak? Best on ground, seven goals straight. He's just going beautifully at the moment. And, and did it with a hand he couldn't feel. Had injections to fix up a, a dislocated finger he had. Couldn't feel three fingers in his in his left hand for the first half. That close to not playing. They had to get him into hospital. I thought the finger might have been uh, uh, fractured and uh, not able to, uh, to play. So brilliant effort. Hey, Luke Hodge and the sliding rule demo is an interesting uh, uh, issue at the moment. I still don't feel as though the umpires have totally got a grasp on, on the way they want the ruling. So what he's done there, he's been paid the free kick against him there for coming in on main. Yeah, and the problem with that, as I look at it, is that he has technically slid into the ball. I'm not sure he made any contact with Mark. This is the previous week, which the AFL has admitted was a wrong decision. He initially got the free kick, and Harry O'Brien was reported for that. That was reversed by way of the AFL admitting that was wrong. But at least there's a consistency in saying that was wrong previously and then rewarding that decision against him on the Saturday. Yeah, there is. I'm still confused, and I still don't like the rule. Okay. And I think that's the problem, is that we're adapting to a rule I don't think we needed to. I think they could have solved it by just saying, if you... Ha- yeah, have a violent act and we decide that look out we'll report you I reckon they could have fixed it up in a minute they could also fix up the, the runners now we had a crack at them uh, from uh, I think way back in round one where they had an orange uh, vested runners in a Gold Coast Suns game who are orange <laughs> and uh, I've come out with the Melbourne and GWS game on Saturday afternoon surely the runners are in a different colour don't I, I don't can get fix that one a little magenta number or a turquoise or a Lime green, what do you reckon? There are a few other options, and I think orange uh, is probably not the one that we need to see with a, a Giants and a Melbourne game in the future. You love Cyril Rioli, Dust. Uh, is he there rising here, or is he entitled to do it, given he's a immense talent? Tapping on in the way he does. He does he likes. Have a look at that. That's an instinct that you can't teach. And then the actually ability to, to put it straight down Buddy's throat. Buddy torched a couple there. <laughs> Could have been out. Roughhead turns around and suggests he might have kicked it his way. But uh, I love Cyril Rowley highlights. Can't get enough of it. Uh, Sydney captain Kieran Jack uh, reverted to his rugby league uh, upbringing here when uh, he's just trying to get away from Stevie Johnson. His father is one of the all-time greats of rugby league. Gary Jack, an, an Australian player. And that's the old David Campisi goose step from uh, Rugby Union. Not going to fool Stevie J with that. You need a little bit better to take on the old master, but uh, I like it. Uh, he's a good little player, Kieran Jack. Hey, I reckon on the weekend we saw some uh, howlers when it came to guys having shots at goal from within a metre. Have a look at uh, a couple of these. Ryan Crowley, I don't think ever, anyone's ever missed a goal this badly from five centimetres out. Genuine comedy. Crowley can't believe it. Uh, this one's not far off as well. The big Q. Brain to foot is a fair way to get down there for the big Q, and that uh, didn't end well. Shannon Burns yesterday. Now, the funny part about this is that Despite the calamity, he actually celebrates. No, I'm sorry, Shannon. <laughs> Chelsea's decided that isn't coming your He's way. He's my favourite, though. Big text. <laughs> at that stage, the Bulldogs were competitive. That didn't uh, end well. And big text. So something happened on the weekend, Damo, that was just a little bit bizarre. Hey, keep uh, clicking back to afl.com.au for more news and great video content throughout the week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Monday. Damien Barrett and I back for Access All Areas.